It would be a bit of an understatement to say that Disney has left an indelible mark on animation throughout their hundred year history. Over that time, they've given us countless wonderful stories, worlds, and of course, characters. But to truly appreciate the amazing characters they've created, you have to acknowledge the not so good ones too. Disney has created many iconic characters, but they've also created more than a few that we really wish they didn't. Perhaps they were annoying, or maybe they weren't interesting to watch. Whatever the reason, today we'll be making our way through the Magic Kingdom and deciding once and for all which Disney characters are the worst of them all. I'm Caleb with Wicked Binge, and this is The Worst Disney Characters and Why They Suck. Starting this list off, let's talk about Myrtle Edmonds from Lilo and Stitch. One of the many students in the hula class Lilo attends, Myrtle is more or less a direct foil to Lilo. While Lilo is friendly and caring, Myrtle is bossy and selfish. Okay, so she's an antagonistic character, but so are many of the more popular characters in the Disney canon. What about her makes her so especially bad? In our eyes, Myrtle is so annoying and unlikable because she feels real in a way most Disney antagonists don't. There's no fantastical or magical element to her character, she's just an average everyday bully. And we've all had a few experiences with people like her, have we not? Also, not helping her reputation is that she's one of the few characters in the film who is shown to have absolutely no positive traits. Characters like Stitch and Joomba might not start off as heroic characters, but they eventually morph into more positive beings by the end of the film. Even Captain Gantu, the main villain of the movie, is more of a situational villain than a traditional mustache twirling one. The same cannot be said for Myrtle. She starts out unpleasant and is still that way at the end of the movie. The reason Myrtle isn't higher on this list, simply put, it's because she's supposed to be that way. That is the ugliest thing I have ever saw. Myrtle is at no point intended to be a character we as the audience enjoy, and due to that, we think it's a little unfair to give her a high position on this list. Still, in terms of Disney foes, Myrtle is as nasty as they come, and the easiest to hate, securing her the first spot on this list. In sixth place, we have Gurgi from the Black Cauldron. Gurgi is a little troll creature who becomes part of the main ensemble in this film during their perilous adventure. Now, Disney sidekicks have a bit of a reputation for being annoying and superfluous additions to the movies. And while we will argue otherwise, in the case of Gurgi, those detractors couldn't be any more correct. Gurgi may not be the worst sidekick on our list, but he's probably the most annoying. His strange high-pitched voice and knack for referring to himself in the third person seems rather reminiscent of Gollum from Lord of the Rings, a much more compelling fantasy story if you ask us. And trust us, the voice gets very grating very fast. Beyond his voice, his character is just plain unlikable. He's a thief who steals things like food from others. He's also incredibly cowardly. It's a combination that just serves to make his character all the more unbearable. As the sidekick character, Gurgi is also also the usual source of comic relief in the film. Black Cauldron, however, is one of Disney's darkest films to date, which makes all the comedic scenes featuring him feel jarring. Overall, Gurgi might just be the poster boy for annoying Disney sidekicks. He's obnoxious and serves little purpose for the majority of the film, leading to one of Disney's worst sidekicks in their entire film catalog. Up next, we have Maggie from home on the range. Once a show cow, Maggie now lives on a peaceful farm where she often butts heads with the posh Mrs. Calloway. Like Gurgi, Maggie would probably be tolerable if she was the sidekick in another Disney movie, but that's the problem right there. Instead of being a sidekick, Maggie is our main hero. Maggie has one of the more flat personalities when it comes to protagonists in the Disney canon. She's a character out of her element who loves fun and does 
doesn't like to play by the rules of her new home. It's a character archetype that's been done time and time again in animated movies and much better as well. Come on, Callaway. It'll be fun! Her feuding with Calloway, the main source of conflict regarding her character in the film, also comes off as a pretty uninteresting retread. It's little more than the character who loves fun versus the character who follows all the rules. Another classic cartoon cliche. And of course, Maggie is every bit as annoying as someone like Gurgi is. Uh, we're being pretty harsh to Maggie, so that kind of begs the question, why is she so relatively low on the list. Well, it's because she's from Home on the Range. Not only is it one of the more disliked films in the Disney catalog, but when people do mention the things they enjoy about it, how often are the characters among those things? Trust us when we say that the other characters aren't any more enjoyable. It's only more noticeable with Maggie because she's the character we follow the most. The main character or not, however, this is one face we don't think we can put up with for a second longer. Coming up next is the newest character on our list, Sisu from Rhea and the Last Dragon. The titular Last Dragon, she possesses water abilities and was one of the many dragons that protected Rhea's home. On the surface, Sisu sounds like a really interesting character in this film. While Rhea has trouble trusting others and is usually pretty serious, Sisu is naive and fun-loving. This leads to the two clashing throughout the film, eventually culminating in Rhea learning an important lesson. The problem with Sisu comes primarily from how this is all depicted. While she's supposed to be adventurous and outgoing, she's another side character who is more irritating than anything else. She ultimately doesn't feel that much different from other modern Disney sidekicks, despite her intriguing backstory and abilities. In addition to that, Sisu is saddled with one of the weaker characters designs we'll look at on this list. When you think of Water Dragon, you'd probably imagine a character design for the ages. Unfortunately, Sisu barely even looks like a dragon, and her appearance doesn't hint at her water powers whatsoever beyond a blue color scheme. They're like opposite of dragons. Aquafina's vocal performance also leaves a lot to be desired, becoming one of the more egregious examples of celebrity voice acting in recent years. While Sisu plays a pivotal role both in the story of the film and in the evolution of Rhea's character, her actual character is one of the weakest in this most recent era of Disney films. Between her grating personality, boring design, and typical role as the sidekick character, it's no wonder fans weren't wishing for more of this dragon. In third place, we look at not one character, but a whole trio. Who else could it be other than the gargoyles from Hunchback of Notre Dame? When it comes to the topic of despised Disney characters, it's almost always just a matter of time before someone brings these fellows up. Consisting of Victor, Hugo, and Laverne, the gargoyles are the closest thing Quasimodo has to a friend for much of his life. Life. They're also the main source of comic relief in the film, which is the main problem we and most others have with their characters. If there was ever a Disney movie that absolutely did not need to have a goofy side character, it's this one. Hunchback is quite possibly Disney's darkest film, as it touches on themes and topics that Disney hasn't covered before or since. All that maturity gets thrown out the window whenever these three start talking, however. What makes it worse is that the film itself is really good, whereas previous characters like Maggie and Gurgi were relegated to some of the weaker entries in Disney's filmography, the gargoyles are featured in one of their most underrated films. So not only are they annoying on their own merits, but every scene with them kills the movie in a way we don't think any other Disney sidekick has done. Every time they show up, you just want the scene to finish up so the actual 
actual movie can continue. Even Disney themselves seem to have thought these characters didn't fit in the movie, as they contribute little to the plot until the climax of the movie. In conclusion, the Gargoyles may just be the most infamous example of Disney's obsession with annoying sidekick characters. And did you have to give them a musical number? Second up, while we said the Gargoyles might be the textbook definition of the obnoxious side character, this next one more than beats them at their own game. From Treasure Planet, it's the navigator robot, Ben. A robot who became stranded on the legendary Treasure Planet, Ben plays a very short role in the movie, but it's an excruciatingly painful one at that. Ben screams almost every line of dialogue he says, and his personality is annoyingly eccentric. Pull my memory circuit so I can never tell anybody about- He sticks out like a sore thumb in the film's cast for a few reasons. For one, his goofier personality feels at odds with the film's more serious tone. While it's still a family-friendly Disney film, Treasure Planet is a lot more subdued with its humor when compared to other Disney films of that era. Ben is far too cartoony for a film that's trying its hardest to be an adventurous space opera. The second reason he sticks out is because of how unoriginal he comes off as. Treasure Planet is a Disney film bursting with creativity and uniqueness at every turn, yet Ben's character is as generic as they come. There's little that differentiates him from, say, C-3PO in the Star Wars films. And it's hard not to be reminded of him every time Ben is on screen, something you can't say for the other characters in the movie. Really, he just felt like a character shoehorned into the film because a Disney executive felt the movie needed a funny comic relief character, which would certainly explain the shortness of his appearance in the film. It's not every day you get a character who can rival the gargoyles in feeling out of place, but Ben manages to do just that. So we have to give him this spot on our list. All in all, this is one character who we really wish was left on the cutting room floor. Finally, we've reached the very worst Disney character, and we don't think there's any character more deserving of this title than Buck Cluck from Chicken Little. Buck is Chicken Little's father, and the two don't particularly get along well following both the death of his mother and Little's status as a social outcast. While that sounds like the beginning of a pretty cliche arc of a parent learning to be proud of their kid, the way it happens in Chicken Little paints a picture of Buck Cluck being one of the most detestable parents in Disney history. And when some Disney parents are, you know, actual villains, that's not a great look. Buck Cluck, like a lot of the other citizens of Okie Oaks, thinks of Chicken Little as crazy, but he is far worse than any of them about it. You'd think he'd be at least a little comforting considering it's his own son we're talking about, but Buck is a rather uncaring dad. When his son wants to join the baseball team, he tells him not to. Not because he's worried for him, but because he's worried for himself. He's a very self-centered character, which is also evident when he begins to celebrate his son only after winning a game. He only worries about Chicken Little because he worries about what his actions will do to his standing in the community. The main reason Buck Cluck gets this spot on the list, though, is because he's supposed to be one of the heroes in the film. While a lot of the sidekicks are annoying somewhat on purpose, and while another character like Myrtle was intended to be despicable, Buck is supposed to be someone we should like by the end of the film. Sure, he learns his lesson when everything is said and done, but the road to getting there paints him as an incredibly unlikable and uncaring figure. So, why should we care how he turns out in the end? Buck Cluck is more than deserving of the infamy he's garnered over the years, and for that reason earns our title of the worst Disney character. But let us know in the comments section if you agree with our ranking, and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge more of our videos. But most importantly, stay wicked.